without you I'm weak and I'm certain And I feel so naked and cold Like a window without any curtain My innermost feelings unfold The drink I just had It wasn't as bad as the first We were quarantined for 16 weeks there when we were on a mission. And we had measles, whooping cough, you name it. And the most sad part about it was that the funerals there, the bell that rang for the funerals, We'd have around about three funerals a week from infants and elderly people. And um, a malnutrition was one of the main causes of ill health there. There was food there, but it wasn't the right sort of food. And we remember the old people dying there. And uh, from malnutrition, lice, not head lice, but body lice. I don't know if you've ever anybody's ever seen body lice but there was no facilities there for our people to be looked after our elderly people but from that period of time up until the early 50s early 60s there was a change towards our people in the health wise so yes from those days to that particular period of time we've seen the change in the health of our people. Tell me how you but to be there and to walk over that land and have a good spiritual feeling of the land, when the emus uh, laid uh, and scrubbed country, uh, you had a special feeling, we have a special feeling today when we go out into the bush country and, and say to ourselves what a wonderful place this must have been prior to European contact when our people lived on this land. And so it wouldn't have hurt to set aside portions of land for our people to practice our traditional ways and uh, whatever there was else there in uh, on that land to do. So that's, yes. that's, that's what you... And that's important for, yes. for the future of land rights, yes. so that must be sort of included in, in any future well, direction for land rights. Well, I'd say one of the main ones is all that, you know, to have that land, just to have a spiritual feeling. Even we don't own the land today, we have that spiritual feeling, but it would have been better if we would have been able to say, well, this is our land, this is our people's land, whichever part of the great continent we live in, and uh, say to ourselves, you know, We'll walk over this land, go to the workshops, the stony ridges where our people uh, struck off stones for knives and whatever, and the workshops from those places would have been uh, preserved and learnt those young people in the years ahead of us to have done the cultural work and uh, things like that. Land rights is, uh, is one of the most important things that should be uh, given to our people. Our people don't own a, an acre of ground to call our own. And uh, we can't live in the past, but we can learn from the past and the future of our young people today. And I'm going to say that the young Aborigines today are a lot smarter than we ever were. So how do we involve them? Well, the only way that we can in, 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 uh, involve uh, the people who will have an interest is to tell the truth of what happened to our people. Uh, as brutal and bloody as it was, we've got to know the truth what happened to our people. Stay home.
home is where you find it Will this place ever satisfy me? It's hard to say how far we can go back, but it's a start if we can get young people interested in the land because the land is the basic uh, uh, living area, if you like, or the survival of our people, the land. Without the land, uh, we've seen our, uh, our cultures disintegrate. And so we've got nowhere to go to, to uh, practice those, uh, those uh, uh, methods. Even though we won't go back to uh, pre-contact uh, uh, days, there is a, uh, an incentive there to do things that we can do and hopefully bring part of our languages back in all our areas. Our people were a wonderful race of people and uh, we hope it survives well into the next millennium, next thousand years if you like. Yeah.